devastating diseases, terrifying lover spats, and accidents that took everything away. These 90s sitcom stars met some truly tragic ends. In 1988, Dustin Diamond started playing quintessential TV nerd Samuel Screech Powers on Good Morning Miss Bliss, which was reworked into Saved by the Bell after one season. That show ended after four seasons in 1993, but Diamond wasn't done with his time as Screech. He showed up again in Saved by the Bell the college years and then returned as an assistant principal in Saved by the Bell the new class. In January 2021, Diamond checked into a Florida hospital while suffering from full body pain. Following a battery of tests and examinations, doctors diagnosed him with stage 4 small cell carcinoma, an advanced and highly malignant form of cancer. On February 1, 2021, just three weeks after his diagnosis, Diamond died. He was only 44. You know, it's a little weird, but great. <laughs> kind of like Screech. Uh -huh. <laughs> Following an eight-season stint as a cast member on Saturday Night Live, Phil Hartman took a prominent supporting role on the NBC workplace sitcom News Radio. Set in a New York news talk radio station, the show featured Hartman as Bill McNeil, an obnoxious, self-absorbed anchor. His four years on News Radio coincided with his recurring roles on The Simpsons as formerly famous actor Troy McClure and sketchy lawyer Lionel Hutz. Off-screen, Hartman's marriage to his third wife, Bryn, was fraught with turmoil. In 1997, Bryn suffered a relapse in her substance abuse recovery and allegedly took cocaine given to her at a Christmas party by her husband's news radio co-star Andy Dick. Early in the morning of May 28, 1998, police received a report of gunshots at the Hartman's home in Encino, California. A search of the home and subsequent investigation led authorities to conclude that Bryn, who had alcohol and cocaine in her system at the time, had shot Phil while he was sleeping, before she then killed herself. Hartman was only 49. Christy Alley joined the popular NBC sitcom Cheers in 1987 as melodramatic bar manager Rebecca Howe. She also served as a romantic interest for Ted Danson's bartender character Sam Malone. After Cheers went out with a bang in 1993, Alley's next big TV project was the 1997-2000 sitcom Veronica's Closet, on which she played the owner of a lingerie company. On December 5, 2022, Alley's children, True and Lily Parker, announced that their mother had died. She'd been diagnosed with colon cancer that May, which she hadn't announced publicly. As her children wrote, Our incredible, fierce, and loving mother has passed away after a battle with cancer, only recently discovered. Allie was 71 years old. Before starring in one of the most iconic sitcoms of all time, Matthew Perry had also appeared on the likes of Growing Pains, Who's the Boss, and Charles in Charge. Then his life changed forever when he took on the role of sarcastic but charming Chandler Bing on NBC's phenomenally popular Friends. After that show wrapped up its 10-season run in 2004, Perry continued to work on TV in the likes of Studio 60 on the Sunset Strip and The Odd Couple. Perry stopped acting after 2017, though he did participate in 2021's Friends, The Reunion. A year later, he released his memoir, Friends, Lovers, and the Big Terrible Thing, which recounted his excruciating journey to sobriety. On the afternoon of October 28, 2023, authorities responded to a call regarding an unresponsive person at Perry's home in Los Angeles. The actor was found by first responders in his hot tub and was pronounced dead. He was only 54. It was just such a uh, magical thing for so long. Full House was one of the most popular shows on ABC's lineup during its eight-season run from 1987 to 1995. The ultra-sweet sitcom revolved around widowed father of three, Danny Tanner, raising his three daughters with help from his brother-in-law, Jesse, and best friend, Joey. As Danny, Bob Saget was the moral center of the show, who was always there for a hug and a life lesson. During Full House's run, Saget also hosted ABC's America's Funniest Home Videos, and he later served as a narrator on How I Met Your Mother from 2005 to 2014. He also maintained a steady career as a stand-up comedian. On January 8th, 2022, Saget performed a set in Jacksonville, Florida, and then retired to his room at the Ritz-Carlton, Orlando. When his family didn't hear from him the next day, hotel security ran a wellness check that afternoon and found Saget in the bed in the dark. Authorities pronounced him dead shortly afterwards. The medical examiner's office concluded that before he went to sleep, he'd suffered a fall and struck his head, not realizing his injury would prove to be fatal. He was 65 years old at the time of his passing. In the domain of exemplary TV dads, one of the most notable was also a standout uncle, wealthy California judge Philip Banks on The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. He was a turns grouchy, but he also provided valuable guidance and structure to his nephew Will, who moved from his hometown of West Philadelphia to stay out of trouble. As portrayed by James Avery, Uncle Phil was usually the butt of the joke and the comic foil to the younger characters. Avery also appeared on dozens of TV shows before and after his run on Fresh Prince, which lasted from 1990 to 1996. In November 2013, Avery suffered a heart attack and doctors then performed a bypass surgery on him. Seven weeks later, though, on December 31st, he died in a hospital in suburban Los Angeles from cardiorespiratory arrest. An autopsy revealed that he had coronary heart disease, type 2 diabetes, and an advanced form of kidney disease. He was 68. He was a wonderful man, the gentle giant. 
Lamont Bentley broke into showbiz as a teenager and landed guest spots on numerous teen-centered 90s TV shows. His most notable and longest-lasting role was on Moesha, the UPN sitcom starring pop star Brandy. Bentley played Hakeem Campbell, Moesha's next-door neighbor and on-again, off-again boyfriend. He also played Hakeem in three episodes of the spin-off series The Parkers. In the early morning hours of January 19, 2005, Bentley was driving a Mercedes outside Simi Valley, California on the 118 freeway. According to eyewitnesses, he took an exit at a high speed, lost control of his vehicle, and crashed. The car rolled and Bentley was ejected onto the freeway where he was struck by multiple cars. Authorities declared him dead moments later, with an autopsy identifying blunt force injuries as the direct cause of his death. He was only 31. Michelle Thomas was most famous for her stints as romantic interest on a pair of popular network sitcoms. On the later seasons of The Cosby Show, she played Justine, the first love and girlfriend of Theo Huxtable. Then, from 1993 to 1998, she had a recurring gig on ABC's Family Matters as Myra Monkhouse, a charming young woman obsessed with nerdy Steve Urkel. Thomas's other credits included an appearance in the 1999 movie Unbowed, as well as a few dozen episodes of the daytime soap opera The Young and the Restless. Sadly, her career wouldn't last much longer, as she died in December 1998 that the Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center in New York City. Her publicist revealed that she was indeed being treated for cancer. She was only 30 years old. Farrah Fork joined the NBC sitcom Wings in its fourth season in 1992 as no-nonsense helicopter pilot Alex. Her character turned the love triangle of brothers Brian and Joe and lunch counter operator Helen into a rectangle. Alex and Brian ended up dating, and after they split up in 1995, Fork left the show. Oh, I'll see you guys. And I mean that in that uh, non-specific, gender-free, unisex kind of way. She also appeared in four episodes of Lois and Clark, The New Adventures of Superman, as District Attorney Mason Drake. After a 2005 voice gig on Justice League Unlimited, Fork stopped acting. Sometime after that, she returned to her home state of Texas and was eventually diagnosed with cancer. In March 2022, her mother released a statement to the New York Times revealing that her daughter had died on February 25th. She was 54 years old. Merlin Santana appeared on a number of 90s sitcoms, beginning with a guest star spot in a couple episodes of CBS's Major Dad. He followed that up with a seven-episode stint on The Cosby Show and a starring role as Marcus Dixon in the blended family comedy Getting By. Then, beginning in 1996, he was one of the teenage stars of The Steve Harvey Show, which ran for six seasons on the WB. In the high school set sitcom, he played Romeo Santana, a scheming wannabe ladies' man with a very high opinion of himself. The series finale of The Steve Harvey Show aired in February 2002, and Santana sadly died less than a year later. On November 9, 2002, after leaving the home of an associate in the Crenshaw District of Los Angeles, he sat in the passenger seat of a non-moving car with a friend in the driver's seat. Shots were fired from outside the vehicle that struck Santana. His friend drove for a few blocks and found police, but Santana was pronounced dead. Three people were arrested in connection with the death. Monique King, who was 15 at the time, falsely claimed to two of her friends that Santana had made a pass at her. That angered them enough to shoot the actor, who was 26 years old at the time of his death. All three parties were convicted and sentenced for their roles in the murder. Robert Pastorelli had appeared in an episode or two of dozens of TV shows before he landed a role on the CBS sitcom Murphy Brown in 1988. He played Eldon Bernanke, a wise, kooky bohemian artist who took six years to paint his client's townhouse. Pastorelli proved so popular that he left Murphy Brown halfway through its seventh season in 1994 to star in his own CBS show, the bike messenger comedy Double Rush. Alas, that show was quickly canceled after just one season. In March 2004, Pastorelli's personal assistant discovered his body in the bathroom of his Los Angeles home. There was suspicions that his death was drug-related, so an autopsy was conducted. The Los Angeles County coroner ultimately determined that Pastorelli died from an accidental overdose of heroin. He was only 49. I gotta tell you, you, you were getting much better at, at the end. <laughs> David Strickland went from playing bit parts in movies and sitcoms to landing a role as oddball music writer Todd Stiles for most of the first three seasons of the hit NBC comedy Suddenly Susan. The show was developed as a vehicle for its star Brooke Shields, who was surrounded by an ensemble cast playing the strange staff members at a San Francisco magazine. The show really raised the profile of its actors, as they found themselves starring in the third most watched show on TV during its first season. Off screen, Strickland was dealing with some mental health issues, including bipolar disorder. In 1998, he attempted suicide, and then the following year, he stopped taking his prescribed mental health medication. In March 1999, he was discovered dead in a motel room in Las Vegas. It was determined that he killed himself. He was only 29. The season three finale of Suddenly Susan featured the other characters unable to find Todd and ultimately receiving the news that he had passed away. John Paul Stoyer made his on-screen acting debut in 1989 in an episode of the NBC sitcom Day by Day. After some guest spots on a few other shows, he was cast as Quentin Kelly, the thoughtful and sensitive young son of comedian Brett Butler's lead character on Grace Under Fire. Stoyer ultimately left the show after three seasons in 1996. 
12 years old at the time, his parents made the decision reportedly because of Butler's behavior, which allegedly included exposing herself to her young co-star. The part of Quentin was then recast, and Stoyer never acted again. He would then transition into a career as a musician, moving to Portland and joining the band Problems, which he fronted under the stage name Johnny Jules until his death by suicide on January 1, 2018. He was only 33. If anyone you know needs help with addiction issues, mental health issues, is struggling, or is in crisis, please contact SAMHSA's National Helpline at 1-800-662-HELP-4357.